What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Icy, the White Wasteland, which is sort of like an RPG, well, it's a tough one. It's not really, so I don't really know what to say about this game because this is a more or less blind playthrough, but I've been following it for about a month now. And if you like Neo Scavenger, this game seems to be like a text-based Neo Scavenger set in a post-apocalyptic Ice Age world. And so I read the description, I looked at all the videos, I watched all the press links and press kits, and I was like, ooh, I kind of want to check this out. And I had a big gap on my Friday recording list. So I had a hole so that I could go ahead and play the game for a little while, turn on a camera, maybe talk to all of you fine folks while we work our way through the Wasteland Winds. And so I figured it'll be interesting. If it ends up not being interesting, we could just do a couple episodes like an extended impression series, and then we'll move on to something else. But if it ends up like really sort of catching our fancy, I guess we'll stick it on out. I do enjoy sticking it out. It's a fun thing to do. So let's go to New Game. There it is. Okay, so we started off with a default portrait here. That's the look that every girl at the bar gives me when I sit down next to her, like instantly like, uh, are you kidding me? So let's go through some of these portraits right here and see what's up. Okay, so we got like a couple different hairstyles. Got a couple different outfits. That's pretty cool. For the male character, what do we have going on? Alright, so it looks like we got kind of like Inuit Eskimo fashion going on with everybody. He's got a new Shanka, that's pretty cool. Is that how it's pronounced? Ushanka? Ushanka? I don't know how to say it. Either way, my dad has one that's made out of like wolf pelts from Russia or something like that. It was a wedding gift he got like 25 years ago. 35? 4? I don't know. I'm getting older and I've lost track of time. That's one of the weird things about getting more ancient is that you just like lose track of time and you can't count properly anymore. I'm gonna go with this one just because I like the look on her face. Are you serious? Right? Alright, calm down. I'll move to another bar stool. God. So, we've got stats here and I assume these are probably gonna dictate how we play the game. We've got body. It's our overall fitness, so I guess this encompasses both dexterity and strength, HP, and how much we can carry, okay? Mind is going to represent our smarts, cunnings, clevers, all those sorts of things that we can pluralize. Sounds good. Oh, it gives us experience, too. That's pretty cool. And then word represents the charisma and social attitude of the character. It affects the relationship with the party, and it's useful in any situation. We have a party? No way. Oh, I love parties. Parties are the best. Parties get off the hook once I get there. I'll be like, yeah, standing on a chair, do a little dance, got a 40 up in me. Anyways, let's go to... got melee. We've got bows, firearms, scavenge, hunt. I think these are all pretty self-explanatory. These are skills, and I guess we probably buy these with our XP over there. Stealth, medicine, speechcraft, and intimidation. That is your ability to talk to people named Tim. It's intimidation. It is what it is. I think I'll probably go, I mean, I'm one of those people that really likes to balance everything and just like, we can be super smart, super brawny. It looks like you can actually almost even this out to be median level. I don't know, I'm guessing that you get XP right here because it is up underneath our portrait. A lot of this is going to be blind and so I wanted to give you guys my first impressions of the game so that it would be an accurate sort of, I guess, representation of what you might be going through the first time you play. So yeah, we'll figure it out later. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? Who needs to be prepared for an Arctic glacier? I'm sure that's a journey that's super easy and nothing bad will happen. I don't know if I want to be good at fighting or if I want to be good at other things. One of the fun things about games like this is that after your first playthrough, you can always go through a second time because you'll know what the best skills are and you'll know what's broken and you can play it sort of perfect min-max mode if you wanted to, but that's another reason why I wanted to play it sort of blind is so that I didn't know about any of those exploits after reading the forums or whatever. The game comes out next week, so let's go. We've got 3-3-3 right there. And I think I'll put a little bit extra into, it looks like it caps out at 5, I think. You can't go any higher than 5, so I assume that means you're like a super Mensa genius or something like that. So evening things out seems like a plan that might not be a good idea, but it might be a good idea. I don't know, it's hard to say without having played the game. Let's go for, eh, I tend to like smart and charismatic characters. But it's all it's usually a pretty good idea to go with like a first real combat character most of the time because most games seem to be a little bit easier for combat characters. So I'm gonna go in like that right there. And then we need some skills to go along with this. So I think it'd be better if we focus on certain things in here. Bow is useful during fights and hunts. Melee is mostly useful during fights. I'm thinking we should probably go since we built a character all around combat so far. It might be a solid idea. We need something ranged and we need something melee. It looks like, how does this work right here? Okay, so it costs you the amount that you want to upgrade, basically. And I don't know what the maximum skill level is going to be, but we'll work our way through and I'm sure it'll be all right. I don't want to spread my points too thin. I want to have a character that's like good at doing things, but only one or two things. So I think maybe we'll go with, we need something for up close, but then again, if we're good at shooting things, it'll never get close to us in the first place, right? Eh? Tough call. Let's go for support abilities first. 
So scavenging, the skill of exploring ruined buildings, searching for anything useful, it improves loot, while decreasing the chance of dangerous events. Okay, so let's go for a couple of those. I'm going to put things up to three for right now, then I'll do combat skills, and then with whatever's left, I'll put these up a little bit higher. The skill of finding prey and hunting them, obviously, it decreases the chance of getting in trouble while hunting, and allows you better tactics, the tic tacs, to deal with the animals. Okay, and what it means by dealing with animals is stabbing them with pointy objects so that we can then fry them up and make burgers out of them. Delicious animal burger. I don't know if I would go to a restaurant that just called its food generic animal burger. Enjoy it from the first bite to the last. Explore. Okay, so that's going to be, it makes your traveling faster. And it's useful in many different situations to find a better way to reach a certain place. Stealth. Okay. It's useful in any kind of situation from fights to narrative events. I'll probably go with some speech craft in there. Just because I'm playing through a couple of RPGs right now, and it always blows my mind how useful having, like, persuasion skills are. Sometimes they let you bypass entire quests and just not even bother with them, and you just get a fat grip of XP instead, so maybe we'll do that. The skill of treating wounds and illnesses, it improves the HP seal while using medicines, and it allows the player to deal with peculiar diseases. I don't think I'm going to go with a doc right here. I don't think I'm going to do that. A little bit of stealth might not be a terrible idea, but I think that's going to play more into what I want to do up here. Let's go ahead and take like a little bit of hunting, a little bit of exploration, and I don't know if I want to go with a bow or a gun because it seems like I want to do something ranged and I want to have a little bit of melee. So we'll take melee up to like, eh, six seems too high. Six, eh, we'll leave it at six. That's okay. And I've got to choose a ranged weapon to go with too so that I can actually do something to the enemy before they're right there on top of me because if we're fighting like crazy owl bears in the snow, Melee is not going to be a suitable way to fight with those. I think I'll probably go with... Hmm, I wonder if guns are rare in this game. We'll figure it out, I guess. If we're going to take a bow, I would say you're going to go with stealth. And if we're going to go with firearms, I'd say just like scrap the stealth altogether and don't even worry about it. Melee might be useful in stealth. Eh, let's just go with... I say we go with guns. So there we go. There's our character. This might end incredibly poorly, but if we have to re-roll, we have to re-roll. Who cares? It'll be fun. I do this all for fun anyways, not perfection. It's been two years since you lost your memory in a freak snow slide incident. Your saviors that day are now your nomad family. Today is a day just like any other. You're out hunting in the forest with your companion and good friend Jerome. You wake up in the woods surrounded by the snow and ancient trees. A cold wind is blowing on your face and you suddenly feel that your arms and your legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle touch on your shoulder. It's Jerome that woke you up. The bait you set up two hours ago finally lured a beast. Hey, wake up. We have some prey in sight. He smiles at you and keeps talking. Come on. Don't be lazy. Wake the fuck up. You still feel confused and the white glowing snow dazzles you, but you soon manage to get on your feet. The old man is watching you with a friendly smile, just waiting for your brain to start working again properly. So why did I come? Don't be annoying. I don't even know why I came with you. What's up? I'm not going to be a dick to him. I just said he's my friend, so you know, deus ex machina and all that, I figure. I'd like to keep him as a friend. I don't want to turn the first guy in the game into a potential stab threat. So anyways, let's go with... Give me a second. Oh, you have to... Okay, so it's like, give me a second. I can barely feel my legs. Be quick. We don't want to watch our dinner running away. Look at that majestic deer. Today might be our lucky day. Let's wait for it. Okay, let's wait for it to come closer. The deer gets closer, lured by the bait you placed some hours ago. It's a truly majestic beast, and it could provide food for several days. Do I have a gun or do I have a bow? I've got a bow. So I'm going to let Jerome do it then. Go on. I'm still a little sleepy, and we don't want to scare it away. Jerome slowly raises his bow and prepares an arrow. As you want, lazy woman. Jerome takes some seconds to aim to the deer. Then he shoots an arrow that pierces through the beast's neck. The deer emits a strangled cry, falls on the ground, and quickly stops moving. It's a pretty good arrow shot right there if you drop a deer with one arrow. I don't know. I don't know too many people that bow hunt deer, but at the same time, you drop them with one arrow, not bad. Not bad at all. Jerome turns to you with a large smile on his face. Not a bad shot, was it? He puts away his bow and starts walking towards the carcass. <laughs> deer is like, oh my god, you shot me in the back of my neck, why? You get, he looks so surprised to bear, he's like, oh my god, that is a large piece of sharpened wood sticking out of me. You get closer to the deer, the majestic beast is dead and it'll provide days of food to your family. Let's get our dinner home, he looks up at the sun, it's not even noon. 
Hector will have something else for us to do, you can be sure of that. You tie the deer to a strong pole and you head back to the camp. Jerome talks all the way back, still a little excited about what you're bringing. Oh wow, there's like a world map? What? Crazy! Okay, so... Ooh, look at that right there. We walk around the map, we've got our own little figurine. You're able to see the tents of your camp from a distance. You'll follow Jerome, then drop the deer on the ground. Or you follow Jerome. There's no you will in there. I don't know. Sometimes I wanted to put it into like the future tents or whatever. I was telling you what I was gonna do, just in case you wanted to know. Eh. Well, we're gonna eat fucking deer for dinner. Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. You're not family friendly, are you, Jerome? Well, well, well. Suddenly, Goran appears behind you. You brought back a week's worth of food. He looks shifty. I don't trust this dude. This dude looks like he's up to no good. His nose is all red like he's been drinking. Goran, where are the others? You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't seem to be too well. They're hunting to the south of here. You know Irma. She can't simply stand by doing nothing. Anything else we could do? I mean, I guess we could go with... Let's go with anything else we can do. Is there anything else we could do? Well, this deer isn't going to chop itself into pieces. Let's get started. Maybe we'll have time for another run. Let me do that. I'm stuck here anyways, and my ankle still hurts, and I'd rather not walk around. Go for another run. Try to get as much food possible. Or try to get as much food as possible. There's a long road ahead, and I don't want to lose time every fucking day hunting. Let's stock up on some food now while we can. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we could go for another run. Alright, well, I'm ready. Let's go. Just don't fall asleep this time. I'm the old one. I'm the one allowed to go randomly to sleep. Come on, let's go. You take the lead this time. So it looks like we're supposed to hunt over here by this little push pin. I like the graphical representation of the map. I, it looks like it's slightly pixelated, but it also looks hand-drawn at the same time. I don't know. So what do we have? We have like, bullet. no, don't do that. You're going in the wrong direction. Okay, never mind. I almost messed up. So it's day one. It's six o'clock. That button doesn't work right now, so apparently we get that later. Or maybe mousing over them doesn't do anything. What does that do? does something. I bet it comes up later. What does that do? That's like a doorway. I assume that makes me leave the game. Either that or it opens up our ethereal gate so that we can go to the world of Lord British. You remember that back in the day? All those origin systems games? The avatar? There was always like this doorway in his backyard. I always thought that was hella trippy as a kid. Like what would it be like if you just woke up and there was a magic doorway in your backyard? And would you walk through it? That's the real question because this kid didn't even give a damn. He just walked straight into the doorway and is like, well, I guess I'm a magical avatar hero now in another world. In order to start hunting, you enter a forest area and press the hunt button in the right corner. You're in a dark area of the forest where the vegetation blocks most of the sunlight. We can quickly scavenge the area. It takes two hours and increases our risk. We can scavenge the area for four hours. Carefully scavenge the area. It takes up to six hours and decreases the risk. Let's... Our risk is pretty high. Let's give it... It's six in the morning right now. We got time. Let's go ahead and we'll give it like a six hour and maybe a four hour. You encounter a small clutter of lynx. That's not good. Use guns. We can use bow and arrow to kill the lynxes. We can use guns to kill the lynxes. We can surround the lynxes and then attack them or we can leave them. I have no idea what the right choice is right here, but they're kitties. I kind of want to leave them alone. And they've got killer facial hair. They've got like a King Nebuchadnezzar thing going on. We have, we have guns and bullets, right? It looks like we have bullets over here. My character isn't good with bows, so I think bows are a bad call. I guess surround and then attack is probably with spears or something, maybe? A lynx is a pretty big cat, but it's not that dangerous. You successfully kill the lynxes. Oh, well, there you go. It wasn't overly verbose about it, but then again, I guess it didn't need to be, so hey, eh, whatever. You're moving in the bushes to take care of the lynx when one of them jumps out of nothing. Oh, that's not good. That thing is a lot larger than the lynx that I thought I was looking at. Okay, I, I don't live in a place with lynxes, so apparently I don't know that. The only lynx that I have is my Atari lynx. Anyways, we have mountain lions here. That's why we don't have lynxes, because mountain lions are like, hella big. Mountain lions are super scary. So we need to figure out, take your gun and start shooting. Move back to avoid the lynx. I don't know if you can backpedal fast and that thing can be on top of you. What does this one do right here? Hmm, is it like persuade the lynx? It's like you use your rhetoric and prose to make the lynx see that you're not really his enemy. It's more the post-apocalyptic military industrial complex. Okay, never mind. Move back and avoid it. You're unable to react in time on the lynx wounds with its fangs and teeth. You got 13 damage. Oh man. You and got 13 damage? Hmm. It's probably because I don't have a party member right now. Either way though, what are these? These look like little fuzzballs. Can I see what they are? 
I'm just gonna take him. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll go back to camp. How do we know? Oh, no. My health is super low. Oh, my God. Okay, what I learned today is never fight with lynxes. I should have just shot him. All right, I'm gonna err on the side of caution from now on. Finally, I need some rest. Yeah, we probably gotta miss an eye just like Jerome now. You take a glance at the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. It looks like everybody made it back safely. Goran approaches you, so how did it go? Well, not too bad. We brought back something else to eat. Come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. You'll need it for tomorrow. Hector seems to be eager to move as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire, and while the others greet you, Irma, Goran's wife, starts giving plates of cooked meat to the group. Let's all be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're about to eat. Hector coughs after speaking. Will you tell us where we're headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we'll go scavenging in a town nearby. I hope to find something useful for our upcoming travels. No, I mean, where are we going to end up after the long run? Where are we going to spend the winter? Well, we'll travel south, far from any common route. We have to get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. The planes are becoming dangerous, and I'm not talking about all the bandit activity. There are rumors about more and more red horsemen swarming around here. What does it mean? I'm tired of traveling without a purpose. We've always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to unknown lands? Don't worry. It's all snow and cold, just like here. You didn't miss anything special. I don't care what we do. If the planes have become that dangerous, we should probably leave. I won't put any of my children at risk without a reason, and traveling away from any known route is a huge risk, especially when the only thing we know is that we're going south. Well, we can decide to side with Hector. I don't know if there's going to be like power plays or any other like random things going on in here. Or if we can just agree with her. We have a leader because, okay, so that's going to be a Hector decision right there. And then it'd be nice to know a little more about what's ahead of us. Does it really matter? The White Wasteland is all the same. I'm going to say nothing. I'm going to let this play out on its own. There's no need to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Drum turns to you. You remember where we found our friend? We're getting close to that area. I have the right to know where me, my husband, and my children are going to end up. South isn't enough. I want to know what we're going to face. Well... I mean, this will go with then what? I mean, I am interested in figuring out what the chronological series of events is going to be here. Got to decide if I got to buy new, some new snow boots. I don't know. And then what? We'll keep walking? We'll spend the winter here? Exactly. It'll be a hard winter if we have to spend it walking on the mantle. I don't want to do that. I have two children. Hector seems quite annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. You don't want a red horseman clan to attack us and enslave the survivors, do you? It's better to walk on the mantle for an entire winter than face them. The sooner we run away, the safer we'll be. So we have no other choice than running away without a proper plan? These are hard to... Okay, I'm not going to do that one. That's not good. Well, we'll figure out what to do. If the planes are actually becoming dangerous, we have no other choice than run away. That's what I thought. I'm not eager to walk on unknown routes either, but at least we won't have to face the Red Horseman. Am I the only one with a working brain around here? We'll be running into the unknown. Well, we can say you're just afraid, so we can call her Yeller. Or, we can say it's not up to her to decide what's best for everybody. What's unknown is better than certain death. I'll probably go with that one. The unknown is better than certain death. At this point, this is the safest option. Yeah, because nobody ever got killed because he didn't know what he was going out to a fate. Or, because no one ever got killed because he didn't know what he was about to face. Do as you like, but I already know we'll all regret this. Irma goes inside her tent before giving everybody the chance to, or before giving anybody the chance to say anything. I'll talk to her. I'm worried too, but facing the Red Horseman scares me even more. She'll understand eventually. Hector coughs a little before replying. I hope so. I don't want to discuss this ever again. Nothing of importance happens during the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed and prepare yourself for the next day. You wake up in the morning, hear some voices outside. Hector and the others are preparing the plan for the day. Alright, people. Now we're going to spread out in pairs and search for anything useful in that small town over there. Especially be on the lookout for any tools. Irma will stay here with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, you scream. I'll go with Jerome. Goran, you'll go with Mark. Hector turns to you, and you will go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing only empty buildings. Is there anything in particular we need? Tools and anything we can sell or use, but I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. Ask about the area. It's a little ancient town, so there's a lot of buildings. I hope to find something to scavenge, something left behind. Okay. 
Let's depart then and get this thing going. Demetra nods at you. I'll follow your lead. Ooh, she looks rough and tumble. I like her on my team. She's got a big old pearl necklace, though. I don't know what that is. It might just be like a weird pearlescent knob. I don't know. So that's where we're going. We're going to church right now. Fantastic. Time to get our prey. My health is really low. Like, if anything goes wrong here, I'm not feeling confident about my abilities to survive. You find a small town. I'm going to carefully scavenge and lower the risk a whole bunch because our health is really, really low. I thought we were going to heal overnight, but I guess we don't. You find an apartment barely standing despite the damages it suffered. Its stairs are collapsed. So if we had a grappling hook, it looks like we could climb. We could try to climb to the upper floors. Eh. Exploration is only three. I don't know how that's going to go. And then we got to climb down afterwards, I bet. I'll probably let that one go. You couldn't get into the apartment. While exploring, you hear something growling. It's a wolf scared by your presence. I'll probably shoot it. You shoot a single bullet and the wolf runs away scared. So it looks like we found a cooking pot. That's better than getting bit when I have 2 HP. So that sounds really, really awesome. We've got some more little furbles and then it looks like we got a cooking pot. Let's take it. Can we still scavenge here? Do we have to go back afterwards? Oh, we have to get back before sunset. Okay. So yeah, it's basically, I mean, it's 12 o'clock. After a couple hours, you manage to reach the others at the camp. Goran spots you from, di from a distance and greets you by raising his hand. You can see the sadness on his face. What's going on? That's not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passed out a few hours ago and he's in his tent, barely able to breathe. Will he survive? The situation is desperate. We have no medicine to cure this kind of sickness and he's pretty bad now. You see Jerome coming out from Hector's tent, his face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector have been good friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tent as Mark finally asks about him. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of the tent. Jerome sighs. It's over. We couldn't do anything. Holy fuck. Why didn't he say a thing about his health? You know Hector, he wanted us to get away from the planes and he didn't want anything to stop us. Goran stays silent for a few moments, then he raises his head and speaks again. I'll prepare the body for the funeral. You should go and take a break. People scatter around while Jerome comes near you and sighs again. You two are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago, and yet he said nothing, not to anyone, not even me. He just died, leaving a mess behind. Tomorrow we'll need to vote for our new leader, and it will be a mess. Everyone will discuss it, and I bet Irma will go crazy again, screaming and threatening people. Well, we'll get through this. We will, as we always do, but it won't be easy. Rough times are ahead of us. I need to be alone. Call me when Goran is finished with the pyre. Jerome walks away and sits alone not far from the camp. After some time, you are called by Demetra. Everything is ready for the funeral. Everyone gathers around a big stack of wood. After making sure that everybody is here, Goran throws a lit torch on the pyre which slowly starts to burn, shrouding Hector's body in a dance of bright flames. Jerome has a sad face and says nothing. He just stands in front of the pyre and stays there even after everybody else is gone. You're tired and you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night's sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. You see strange lights through the fabric of your tent and you hear the noise of clogs stomping the ground. You hear guns firing as well. Also, the clink of lovely cutlery. They're just... They're a traveling band of chefs that wanted to make dinner for us. They're horse-bound chefs. You are under attack. Well, never mind. My hypothesis was totally wrong. During the night, your group gets attacked by mysterious bandits. So we can fall back or we can fight in melee. I'm pretty good at melee. Like, I don't want to... I mean, we do have bullets and we have grenades and stuff, too. Let's fight in melee. Let's do it. Ow, no! Enemies receive minus 31 HP and minus 6 morale points. Minus 49 for us and minus 10. I don't know if we could win that one to begin with. Yikes, you see an enemy running away from the fight. Take him down with a shot. You successfully shoot the enemy down. Enemies receive minus 5 HP. And I think this is the balance of power right here. I think I'll fall back for a second. Enemies receive zero. Oh, they hit us even though we were running? Oh my god. You feel weak and aching. You try to crawl on the ground, but with each movement you feel the pain all over your body. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower weakens and you pass out. After that, there's only darkness. You don't know how long you stay unconscious. Strange dreams populate your rest. Dreams of a different place and of a different time. You see a shiny tower going towards the sky, technology you've never seen in the White Wasteland, technology belonging to an ancient world which fell apart. During the dream you hear a familiar voice. It's Jerome and he's calling you, asking you to wake up. 
You finally realize you're dreaming and this sudden consciousness brings you back to the waking world. Hey, wake up. You alright? My head hurts, my body too, but I think I'll survive. That's good. We're in a bad situation. You better be ready for anything. You look around. The morning sun blinds you at first, and then you're able to see that you and your mates are sitting on the ground tied. You're not the only prisoners, and there are other people that seem to share your condition. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many tents scattered around, and it's difficult to understand how many they are. Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything else they need to keep us in our place. You will never escape. We tried, but they are too many. They have horses and guns, and if they want us alive, I fear we will all soon become slaves. Well, now they have to keep their eyes on more people, and it won't be hard for us to find an opening. I won't be beaten again just because someone... Well, I won't be beaten again... <laughs> wow, that's a weird word. I won't be beaten again just because you want to do something stupid, is what it should say. Anyway, there's a lot of typos in here. They beat all of us, Joseph, but what should we do? Just wait here to be sold as slaves? Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and then beat the shit out of us. End of the story, so that's why you smell the way you do. Well, we'll have our chance. They can't keep the watch on us every second of every day. There are way too many of us to be easily controlled. Unless you have a freaking genius idea, I'd like to not get beaten again too. Screw you, I'd rather die than be a slave. We're leaving. I don't know how, but we're leaving. The stranger smiles slightly. Sure, I'm really curious to see what you'll do. A bandit approaches you and starts screaming. Shut the fuck up, all of you. We're moving now. Prepare yourself, it's gonna be a long walk. You and all the other prisoners start walking with your hands tied along the bandit's caravan. They constantly watch you and you're unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you become resigned to your destiny. The bandits constantly watch over you and don't even allow you to talk amongst yourselves. You barely get to know the ones who share your destiny. Carlos and April are a couple, and they were in the same group with Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's a young girl, Eva. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing you're able to discover is that the bandits killed her family. But finally, after walking for several days through the White Plains, something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good. Not at all. I think this is where I'm going to break off the episode, so my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the first episode of Icy, the White Wasteland. My name is Splattercat, very happy to have you here today. I figure we'll do a couple more episodes. I'm intrigued right now. You know, it's got a lot of, like, grammatical and typo things, but honestly, I want to see what the game is like once we can free roam around and do whatever we want, because it seems like it's going to do sort of a Neo Scavenger thing, or maybe it's along the lines of something like, oh, I don't know. Almost along the lines of what, like, Banner Saga did, just kind of without the background or whatever, where you kind of just, like, travel and handle events as they occur to your party and your convoy. This might turn out to be pretty cool. We'll check it out tomorrow. I'll see y'all there. Hi to everybody.